Hello everyone, and welcome to another Puzzle Challenge video from ChessUniversity.com. This is Ryan Murphy presenting uh, the solution first to yesterday's puzzle challenge, and then the new puzzle for the day. So, we're starting a new week. Our fresh puzzle will be uh, aimed at beginners for players under a thousand. And um, this is the puzzle from the end of last week, or yesterday. And it was one of the more difficult puzzles of last week. And the challenge here was black to play trying to find the best way out, because right now, Black's facing a tough problem, because both of the knights are under attack, and also on top of that, the rook in the corner is hanging, so it looks really dire. And in fact, it is. If Black doesn't play carefully, there's really only two moves that give Black a reasonable position. Everything else is it's pretty awful. Um, so I want to first come uh, and show you guys the move that was played in the game, which I would say is the second best move, and it definitely keeps the game interesting and very complicated, with rooms for both sides to uh, make more mistakes or to outplay their opponents. And that's the move bishop b7, which is kind of clever. Um, of course, it gives up a bishop. <laughs> White now has to pick between uh, taking the knight and taking the bishop. If they take the knight, then bishop takes b uh, g2 as an option for later. Um, so it's a clever idea, making sure that the rook doesn't hang at least. And now after queen takes, which is by far the uh, most logical move, there's knight d3 check. Now the white king has to pick a square to move to. In the game, it went to d1. And then it was knight f2, king c2, and then knight takes h1, and it was just a huge mess from there. Uh, white was better at some point around here, but black went on to win. But bishop b7 is reasonable, uh, as long as you see this idea that if the king moves the other way, you can you can sometimes take on c1, because this bishop is hanging, and also you have this idea of going for the fork. Uh, though it, in this position, the issue is black's knight is under attack, so in some lines it actually makes sense for black to first uh, bring this knight back, take this pawn... Uh, and then bring the knight back into d3 and just play for sort of an attack against white's king with a piece down. Uh, but that's all very complicated. Uh, the best move, however, and kudos to you if you saw it, was knight 6 to d5, after which white, if they want to try to win material, should play the move c4 to remove uh, the knights from defending each other, so the knight in f4 will be hanging. So c4 is the critical move that you have to calculate. And now this move knight b4 is very important. Uh, the critical test is if black takes, or sorry, if white takes black's rook in the corner. White should not take the knight. It's uh, not actually really hanging due to this nice fork. So the knights still sort of protect each other through geometry. Uh, queen takes a to the move you should have considered as your main line. And then in this position, black should be giving a check. And then trying to take on c1 if the king goes to the, the king side, and giving the check on f2 if, if uh, the king goes the other way. And the difference between this line and the previous one I showed is that here, this knight, uh, the, neither of the knights are hanging to a pawn. Uh, we remove the knight from f6 from danger, so white doesn't have this added option of winning another one of our pieces. Um, so in this case, we're going to either win this bishop, or we're going to be able to give a fork. In either case, that's pretty decent for black. So that's that's the thing to see here. And if you saw that line, good job. It's still very complicated, but this definitely is uh, the best chance for black to emerge from the mess here with a good position. So with that one covered, we're now going to move on to uh, a new position for uh, sort of beginner level players. And that's this position here, where it's white to play and not win, I would say win material, but white's already down uh, a, p a full piece actually. So it's white to play here and, and get some material back using tactics. Um, so if you want to try to solve that, please do. If you'd like to post your solution to get credit or towards reward points on the chessuniversity.com site, check out the link that is posted in the YouTube description and that'll take you to the official post. So if that's interesting, go check the description out. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to the start of the game to show how we reached this position. This was played on chess.com. White's about to make their 16th move. And it was played between one of my students who's just under 1200 on uh, rapid chess on chess.com and his opponent was about pretty pretty close to him around 1160 on the website so this game began d4 knight f6 bishop f4 aiming for a london system e6 knight to f3 pawn to c5 and pawn to e3 where black now played queen b6 trying to go after the pawn on b2 which is a pretty standard way for black to try to meet the london and here, I was very happy to see uh, that my student played the move knight c3, which is very nice. Often uh, in the opening, if you're ahead in development and your opponent tries to grab what we call a poisoned pawn, like this one on b2, uh, it leaves their queen in not only a very vulnerable position, but often it's just kind of out of play for many moves, and then white can develop an initiative based on having more pieces in play. Um, so knight c3 is a very principled move, challenging black to go and try to grab this pawn. 
Um, so I was very happy with that. And uh, here, Black played the move C takes D4. And according to the games in the database, uh, the best move for, for white is in fact knight to b5, as the arrow indicates. And now usually black in this position tries to defend with the move knight d5. Knight a6 is also defending the c7 fork, so that would be adequate as well. But most players are choosing this one because it kind of comes with the tempo. Um, and here, queen takes d4, and it just leads to a very chaotic position where if black takes on d4 and we take back and they take on f4 we have to go in for this really wild imbalance where temporarily of course white is ahead in exchange but it's not clear if the knight that's on a8 is going to uh, escape from the corner uh, because of course if what if white loses this knight for really nothing else black should have more pieces and they should be doing really well so pretty pretty chaotic position i would say quite unclear uh, that's the main move uh, of course you can also go for uh, just taking on d4 either with the queen or with the pawn uh, in the game white took with the queen i think taking with the pawn is maybe a little bit more principled controlling the center a bit better and again if black ever goes in for this idea you you have a very strong move here and i, I would recommend people pause just to try to spot it uh, it's a very common motif to try to go after the queen okay so the key move here is knight to b5 and why is this so nice? Well, the first thing it does is it takes away two squares. First, the knight was hanging, of course. The knight was going to be taken if it didn't, if it wasn't defended or if it didn't move. But secondly, the knight takes away two key squares uh, that the queen would like to run away to, and it takes away the b6 escape square, where usually the queen's able to get back to safety. On top of all those things I just mentioned, uh, the knight is also, of course, threatening to fork on c7. Uh, so all these things together make knight b5 a very powerful move, multi-purpose for sure. Uh, now black should try again this idea of knight d5 to challenge the bishop, guard the fork. And uh, here we see that the black queen can get into trouble very quickly, rook b1, bishop d2. And now black's queen is in very grave danger. If um, if black defends the c7 square again uh, with a move like knight to a6, because perhaps black would be worried about the threat of c4, then the knight moves and there's a fork. So let's say they were to play this. Now rook a1, queen b2, and after bishop c4, it's big danger for black because the queen actually has no squares. Every single square here is covered. There's threats of rook b1 coming. Very dangerous position for black. Black's already pretty much busted here. Um, so yeah, if pawn takes, queen takes b2, those lines end up working out pretty well for white. Um, queen takes d4, black should probably trade queens, but instead they took on uh, b2. And again, uh, the good moment to pause if you're trying to wade through the complications in this position. How do you think white should play here? All right, I'll assume everyone's paused. We'll now continue. Because um, this was a critical moment where white made a really big blunder, and then the game should have just ended on the spot. But white was able to stick around because black made some mistakes. Definitely the key thing to see here is that your rook is hanging. You should save it. The best way to save a piece is usually by counterattacking if it's possible and if it's safe to do so. In this case, the move rook b1 definitely fits the bill because the knight protects the rook. The rook attacks the queen. So black could continue being exceptionally greedy with a move like queen c2, but this fails to a very nice queen trap. Bishop d3 and the queen has no squares. The best that black could hope for here is to counterattack the queen. You would take their queen, they would take yours, and you'd be up a piece. Um... So going back, they can't take on c2, which means they have to run away to a3. And then you can go for this knight b5 move again, or you can develop your bishop and then castle. And in either case, black's queen's off sides, the rook is active, and importantly, white didn't just lose a rook. So going back, bishop d3 was played instead, and then this should have lost both of the rooks. After queen takes a1, king moves, queen takes other rook. This position is totally lost for white. Perhaps black was paranoid somehow that their queen was out of play here, but I doubt it. I'm guessing they just didn't see the rook was hanging. Um... And instead they played bishop before, threatening, of course, to take here with check, forking the queen and the king. Um, but my student noticed that that was a bigger threat than the rook hanging, so he just castled, which is correct. Um, and now takes rook ab1, trade, trade. Bishop c3, knight b5, strong move. Bishop a5. Here there was a very sneaky move, uh, which I quite liked, which was bishop c7, where I think... There's a couple of reasonable defenses here, but the main idea is you're threatening to take this if it's defended by, uh, like, say, the knight, and then go knight c7 check and fork. And, of course, if they take your bishop, you're very happy to take back with check, and then you can take the rook in the corner. 
Um, but the problem here, as far as I can see, the most stubborn way to block this whole concept is just to go b6. And you can give a check on d6, but after king e7, it doesn't amount to anything concrete. Um, so in the game, knight d6 check was played immediately. Knight c4 attacking the bishop. Check. And rook b3. So this whole sequence I like from white. I mean, white's obviously still down a piece, so they should be losing, but black is under pressure here. And they make a mistake, which is what happens when people are under pressure. So knight d5 played. And as I said at the beginning, here it's white to play and win material. So please post either in the YouTube comments or on chessuniversity.com if you see it. And with that, I will leave you guys to solve it. And I'll see everyone tomorrow with another puzzle challenge video. Thank you for watching.